Sometimes you gotta look at the mirror and ask yourself, "Is that really me?" Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler, especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch up here and there to unleash the hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week: Can I make it? Last week, I worked on another DC figure, Black Adam. It may be my best painted head ever. Check it out if you haven't already. Here's another knockoff Marvel Legends. It is not fooling anyone, and it gets worse the longer you look at it. Besides the obvious issue with the face, the colors on the body are also inconsistent. For some reason, the red on the abdomen is super vibrant compared to the rest of the figure, but the main issue are his soulless eyes. Reminds me of. Here's the genuine Defender Strange that I did back in May. I really liked the design and what I did to the face. I wanted to make that Strange a zombie Strange, but I didn't want to ruin his beautiful face, and I didn't want to buy another Defender Strange figure because it's not cheap. Here are the two Defender Stranges next to each other. For some reason, the bootleg one is smaller in size. The skirt is significantly shorter than warped, which I think will actually work for my Death Strange, because it has that windswept look. The figure is also made of this plastic that not only looks cheaper but feels cheaper too. I'm not gonna deconstruct this. It's an overall subpar figure, but the good thing is, because it's a knockoff and is significantly cheaper in price, I feel a lot braver customizing this and making it into Zombie or Death Strange. I don't usually enjoy making permanent physical alterations to my figures, but I feel like I have nothing to lose with this. I wouldn't feel heartbroken if I fail. So, can I make it? Before I start painting, I want to make some small changes first. I don't like figures with these skirt things. On one hand, it's a good design choice because it kind of hides the hip and knee joints. But on the other hand, it really limits the figure from doing dynamic poses. So what I'm going to try is to make some cuts on the skirt to see if I can make it less restricting. That way, the figure can spread its legs more. I cut here and there, and a couple more here. Hmm, it kind of works. Now I can bend them and make them flare out. All right, time to do some damage. I finally got myself a Dremel. I've never used one before. I've used a knife or an etching tool before, but I feel like those tools won't be as effective here. With the Dremel, I should be able to make more organic-looking flesh wounds on the torso and face. Oh, okay, this is interesting. Because the Dremel is spinning at such high speed, it kind of runs towards the direction it's spinning as it hits the surface, so it requires a tight grip. That also means it's kind of dangerous to use. I try to make sure I'm moving it away from my other hand, so I don't accidentally injure myself. The other thing I'm noticing is that it's hard to be precise and intricate. It kind of just does its own thing. But because I'm trying to recreate the rotting zombie look, I don't mind the weird bumpy texture, as long as it looks like there are tears on the outfit. Okay, that is looking pretty good so far. Let me tear up the outfit a bit more. Hmm. Now I want to try the Dremel on the lower body. Okay, this is much harder to control. The Dremel keeps wanting to move by itself. It's especially dangerous because my other thumb is right there. But if I move my thumb, then it will be even more unstable. Okay, let me try a different tool. This one seems to be sharper. And I can use the tip or the size depending on how much damage I want to do. Okay, I kind of like this one on the skirt. It eats up the plastic more aggressively, so let me use this on the rest of the outfit. My goal is to eliminate most of the clean edges. 
to give the outfit that decaying look. And just to reiterate, if you're using this tool, try to go in the direction away from your other hand. The thing is spinning so fast it's a bit unpredictable when it hits the plastic. You don't want it to catch your finger. Take it slow and pay full attention. Okay, the outfit now looks pretty beat up. Let me add a bit of scars onto his hands. Careful, careful, careful. I want to scar Strange's hand, not mine. <sighs> okay, done. Don't want to hurt myself. There's only one body part left to do. I feel like I'm about to do plastic surgery on Strange. Except I don't have a license. Alright Strange, first, I'm gonna have to remove your eyebrows. Off they go. Now your eyes are more piercing than ever. Alright, next, I'm gonna remove your eye bags and give you some dark circles. And a couple of beauty marks here and there. We're going for that asymmetrical face here. And no facial hair for you. Zombies and mustache? No, no. And finally, a dimple. A big dimple. Perfect. And gotta remove the fine lines on your forehead. Can't forget the jawline. Okay, no one should get beauty advice from me. I'm also gonna rough up his hair to give him that disheveled look. Okay, I think he looks pretty dead. Oh, there goes his soul. Anyway, I think he's ready for paint. For once, I'm gonna start with the face. The current skin color is very vibrant and orange. So I need to counterbalance it with a bit of green and purple. Let's see. Oh, I think I'm gonna need a couple of layers to cover up all the scars. I don't want the scars to be black. Oh no, I'm getting flashback. Sometimes these knockoff figures scar you for life. But these are also the perfect figures to practice new techniques with. Loki and Black Widow were one of my early customs, where I first realized I could change how a face looked with paint. Okay, it's also probably because there's no way they could look worse. If you're new to customizing, I recommend trying on figures you aren't emotionally attached to. In this case, I have close to no pressure, because I already have a very good Defender Strange. I won't lose much if this doesn't turn out good. Okay, I shouldn't jinx myself. Now the face is too green and flat. Let me try adding a bit of blue as shading. Uh oh, this is not going the way I imagined. Roll with it. Okay, let's try another color. I'm gonna use the purple on the scars. Mmm, still not working. Still roll with it. Maybe it'll look better if I make them a bit darker. Ah, okay. It's starting to look right. Mmm, I'm gonna work on it a bit more off screen. I'm back. I added more shading to the face and it's looking better. Let me emphasize the sunken areas a bit more. Looking more and more like a zombie. All he's missing are some exposed teeth. Steady. Steady. <sighs> okay, this is too hard to do on camera. Be right back. Okay, there we go. The teeth are a bit crooked, but it's not on purpose. My hand was shaky, but it works. I gotta leave the head alone for now. Let me add a bit of gold back to the outfit. It's missing some gold details on the trimmings and the belt. I like that I don't have to do a very clean job. It can look a bit messy to go with the look. Alright, 
almost there. The red is still a bit too red and not screen accurate. So I'm going to rub a bit of black to darken it and make it look a bit more like it did in the movie. Gotta cover up those bright spots on his torso. This feels wrong. The original red is a good red, for once. But Death Strange's overall color scheme is pretty muted, so I gotta do this. Oh, almost forgot. The flesh wounds on his torso. I'm gonna start with the base color. To block out the shapes first. Hmm, the texture is definitely showing. And it kinda looks like a rotting body. But the color is off. Let me add the purple wounds first. Hmm, that looks fake. More shading. I'm stopping here. I think that's pretty good. If you don't look too closely. Okay, back to the head. I'm still not happy with the hair. Let me first make his hair black. I'm also rubbing a bit of black onto the white hair to make them look a bit more disheveled. Okay, I overdid it. Let me add some white hair back in. Please work, please work, please work. Mm, still not working. Plan B. I want his hair to be even more disheveled, like with stray hair sticking out randomly. So I'm gonna try this. You know how when you use hot glue, you always get these annoying spiderweb things. I'm gonna use those webs as hair. I think that's a better option than clay or paint. I'm gonna don a bunch of blobs on this packaging and pull the gun away to get those webs. I don't know what length would look best. So I'm gonna make a bunch of various lengths and use the ones that look right. Done! Look at that! I only added a couple because it was quite difficult to handle in glue. But let's look at the before and after. Here's the finished figure. It's like a completely different figure now. The darker color tones look really good on Death Strange. It makes the original figure look so cartoonish. Let's take a closer look. The face turned out very very cool. It is not perfect, but it definitely looks like a zombie. Those stray hair was a great addition. I really like that the figure now looks like it's been rotting for days. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Okay, I know he's missing the cape. I still haven't figured out how to do it yet. I still need some time to brainstorm. As you can tell, I like finding affordable ways to do things. I also like to be lazy. The cape is made out of the soles of the dam, and it looks like a lot of work. Another issue is attaching it onto Death Strange and making sure it doesn't topple over. If you have suggestions on how I should approach the cape, let me know. But for now, I think this is good enough for a Halloween themed video. I can't even tell this was made from a knockoff figure anymore. And he's also very fun to pose, because I don't have to do lifelike poses. I can just bend his limbs awkwardly and it'll look right. Here are the two strangers. I really like seeing them side by side. They're the same figure, but also different enough to feel like they're two completely different characters. Alright, let's end this with the photo shoot. Let's start with the two Defender Strangers. I think I mentioned it in my Defender Strange video. I find it a bit difficult to post Defender Strange. I feel like I always have to make him stand really straight, but I don't have that problem with Death Strange. He can slouch or twist his head and still look good. His height also kinda works too. He shouldn't be taller than Alive Strange, not with his decaying body. I just love the contrast between these two. Okay, let's look at Death Strange by himself. 
he looks strange standing like a normal person. There we go. It is very fun to break the typical posing rules. Some of you may know, I work at a photography company, so I'm used to posing people a certain way. I don't put my subjects in crazy poses though. It's more about making my subjects look confident and natural. And you can kind of see I do that to my figures too. I usually try to photograph them as if they're actual people. So what makes photographing that strange fun is that I get to bend some of these rules. I can make the shoulders unleveled and bend the wrists more than usual or turn the head just a tad too much. But there's still one rule that I still follow here. And that is, if I'm going for a dynamic pose, I'm going to try and make sure every limb is doing something slightly different. So the pose isn't symmetrical. It's not that symmetrical poses don't look dynamic. I find those poses more cover art-like because of the strong balance. But when the limbs are all doing different things, it throws the balance off. So your eyes move and flow from one body part to the next. I personally think these kind of poses are more fun than straight on museum poses. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give this video a like and subscribe if you are new here. And as usual, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you. Hey, you can now support me on Patreon. I post quite regularly there, from behind the scenes updates to sneak peeks to video breakdowns. Top tier members will receive a DIY 3D mini poster every month. These mini posters look great by themselves, but even cooler next to other mini posters. I love making things, and this is my way to thank my supporters. The link to my Patreon is in the description box down below.